Hi, welcome to Jesus on the Fly. Um, this week we're going to read Matthew 4, verses 1 through 4, and walk through the beginning of Jesus' temptation, because it's a little long, so we thought we would break it up. Yeah, shorten it up a little bit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Plenty yeah. to talk about. Plenty to talk about. So, all right, Jesus on the Fly, Dave, you want to show us Jesus in Matthew 4, verses 1 through 4? All right, here's Jesus right after his baptism. Chapter 4, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Wow. There you go. So what I... I don't know. The thing that really stuck out to me is in verse three when it calls the devil the tempter. Like I know, I I don't remember that I don't remember before. That it's like yeah. he's the tempter. He's the tempter. Like, it says, why don't like, we just call him what it what he is? It's kind of cool. Like I, in verse one, it says very clearly to be tempted by the devil. So we know you know who we're talking about, and and I think that's awesome that God calls out the devil by name. <laughs> like right. like we don't need to sometimes I think we kind of mess around with a lot of like innuendo and um I what is that called where you give like um nicer ways of saying things that are uncomfortable in our culture um, um yeah politically correct I know not that no, like um, when you <laughs> when you say like oh they fell asleep when you knew they died that's called something Anybody know, throw it up in the comments because okay, we yeah. can't remember our Thank you for being <laughs> on the fly with us. Right, right. Um, but like, I like that God calls out like him by name, like the devil or whatever that Greek term is that is translated the devil. Mm-hmm. But then also like recognize hits him by his action, you know, um, which God frequently does in the word for himself. Like, you know, he is redeemer. He is Savior. Like, it it calls him his names that are wrapped up in his action. But I I don't remember it ever happening for the devil. So that's interesting to me. The tempter. Yeah. Well, it makes me think of um, Jesus' description of Satan also as the father of lies. Or he's the father of lies. Yeah, and that's in John, right? uh, Yeah, I'm not sure. But it's in the Bible. Totally on the fly. (laughs) And, uh, right, and... You know, it's sometimes probably helpful to recognize what the devil is doing. He's mm-hmm. tempting us. He's lying. He's, mm-hmm. you know, doing all those things, right. deceiving us. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, you know, that's important to identify. Right. That is happening to us all the time. Right. Well, so. and it has like the definite article, like the tempter. Like this mm, is his yeah, whole job. Yeah, right. So it's like him. Like he's that's what the, he does. He is the... The tempter, tempter of all temp- tempters. Yeah, and if, if someone's tempting someone else, that's an action of the tempter. You know, that's an action of the devil. Like, that's um, mm-hmm. how he gets his work done, you know, I guess. Right. Um, and I like that in James it says, like, God tempts no one. That's like a, a Bible verse. <laughs> like, you know, it says it very clearly. Yeah, God tempts no that's one. That's true. He is not the tempter. The tempter. So yes. there's, like, the foil there that we can see mm-hmm. where, like, God is all good. There's no, like, evil wrapped up in him. And it's important for us. I think we easily blame God when we feel tempted. Like, because mm-hmm. we... I, why does that happen? Why do we do that? Why do we instantly, at least subconsciously, go to, what are you doing, God? Why? Why are you, you know... Mm-hmm. Well, I think I think it's because we honestly we ignore the fact that the devil exists, and we're just mm-hmm. like, yeah, we acknowledge that God works in our lives all the time, but we don't acknowledge that the devil's working in our lives too. Like we just think, oh yeah, God is doing this and God's doing this, and yeah, he's got his um, what do you call it? His uh, oh, we his, are like, without words. <laughs> His like not his um, his foreknowledge or not not that Uh-oh. never mind I, let the thought go just let it go. <laughs> but it makes me think of the fact that the devil is the adversary is one one way that the Bible describes him and like you know 
he's you know maybe our adversary but he's really god's adversary like he he's he's only after us because it what it can do that he thinks it can do toward god you know and so Mm -hmm. we're really pawns and i think calling out the devil in our understanding of that is like uh, we you actually have zero interest in us devil (laughs) like you know i think um that really helps us be able to um, understand a little bit more, be a little more comfortable in talking about who the devil is, what he's doing, yeah, right. um, moves us past like the pointy ear, you know, Halloween yeah, exactly. character. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, totally. it's funny to watch it on shows and stuff, but I think it is, you hit something really important is that we, we like to, uh, mm-hmm. ignore that there's evil. <laughs> yeah. That the but devil I mean, it really stuff. is like the two, like, devil and angel on the other shoulder thing i mean that um, seems funny but it's i mean really honestly happening in the spiritual warfare right right so everybody. when we feel temptation then we we know who that is like that's not god that's spiritual warfare and mm-hmm. i think maybe to wrap it up one thing we might want to recognize for the listeners is um good news you know good news that battle has been won uh, the when Christ mm-hmm. died on the cross and rose from the tomb, like death wasn't just defeated, but the devil was defeated. Like it's, but just like my favorite analogy is like D Day happened in World War II, but how long did it take to clean that up? You know how long, and even now, like you can look around at our political climate and see impacts of World War II happening um, within like foreign policies and and interactions in nations and stuff. Like that's the way it is now, right? Like with the devil in our lives in the the world, you know, prowling around as it says, um, he doesn't actually have power. Uh, he doesn't have the power unless we, you know. Give him yeah, a little, sometimes you give say him that some of that you stuff give or him whatever. The, you know, the power to uh, leave yourself open to doing things or whatever. So yeah, it's not simple either. I don't know. I feel like that's a complex thing of like how the devil is still working a little bit. Yeah, and... he's working in ways we can't understand even. So it's kind of mm-hmm. it's it's a dangerous world out there. Yeah, I think um, maybe a good question for the comments is like who. You know, who do you pray over um, for, like, spiritual warfare? You know, who do you include in your prayers? My kids come to mind. You know, praying for our mm-hmm. sp- like your spouse, praying for each other comes to mind. But, like, we are in spiritual warfare. Um, mm-hmm. And we don't want to overdo that because the battle is one, but we also don't want to underdo it. And, like we said at the beginning, mm-hmm. not recognize the fact that the devil exists. So, mm-hmm. you know, who are you praying for? Um, who do you include yeah. in your prayers to shout out and call out to God, you know, to show his triumph over the devil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, while we're talking about prayer, I mean, the Lord's prayer is mm. lead us not into temptation, mm. but like how often do we actually pray any form of that when we pray? Mm. You know, we usually, we're just thanking God, which is great. I mean, I'm not saying right. don't do that. <laughs> I'm saying do all the other things, right. but consider what about temptation? And mm-hmm. I think more, I think, you know, that could be misunderstood too. Like God is leading us into temptation. Well, he's not. He's leading us away. Right. So God, please lead me away yeah. from that. Lead my path. And, and help me t- help me through that, um, you know, and, and give me the strength to face temptations. I mean, that's mm-hmm. a very important part of our Christian lives. I remember doing some different Bible studies with men uh, in particular, and it seems to often come up the temptations of, I mean, just let's be real, adultery, you know, other things that are pornography comes literally to temptations. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, pornography, I was thinking like, I mean, they say, you know, men are more visual or whatever, but mm-hmm. that for some reason that just kind of connects with, you know how we're gonna what what's gonna be different about us we're gonna avoid that temptation yeah yeah and and help each other do that you yeah know, and hold each other accountable yeah. kind of and help each other 
Yeah. yeah. I think mm-hmm. that's really important. And and we have our own stuff over here in womanhood. And sometimes they cross over and blah, blah, blah And we can talk about that for yeah, days. I mean, let's but get, get I think it is sometimes that, important but, to yeah. recognize like specific temptations that we struggle with. Maybe temptations as a parent. Like I, you know, I struggle with my anger maybe a little bit more um, as I parent than I do in other realms, you know. So I think, yeah, being able mm-hmm. to identify those specific temptations in our different like vocations and experiences is yeah. really a good. I love mm-hmm. that about the Lord's Prayer. Thanks, Dave. Hadn't really thought about that, but Mm -hmm. you know, actually taking the Lord's prayer and praying that part, and like considering what things fit underneath that. So, Mm -hmm. all right, yeah, I have more to say on this passage. So, oh, next time, ooh, Jesus on the fly next time. Yeah, I'm just gonna bring bring it back a little bit. So, okay, some other stuff in there that I'm like, whoa, we're gonna talk about that. Oh, you sound like you're getting serious. Oh, I am totally Very serious. serious. Yeah. I love it. All right, Jesus on the fly. Next week, we'll continue doing The Temptation of Jesus. Um, see Jesus out doing his thing, using his words, um, and what we can learn from him as the savior of our souls and, um, you know, savior of our hearts and minds. So, all right. See you next time. See ya.